After 12 years in politics, Labour's former deputy leader, Kelvin Davis, has decided to call it quits. He lost his beloved Tetai Tokoro seat at the election and came in on the list. But spending time with his new granddaughter has convinced him his time's up. Political reporter Lloyd Burr sat down with him for a political post-mortem. Because they can't honour. In Labour's caucus room, a relaxed Kelvin Davis signs off. I think the time is right. After losing power and his electorate. People of Tai Tokoro have told me, you know, Thanks. Goodbye. Davis entered Parliament on the list in 2008, part of a promising Labour intake. Why did you get into politics in 2008? Why did you want to get in? Uh, because I wanted to do right and do well for Māori. But three years later, he was too far down the list and was out, only to make it back in in 2014 when Shane Jones quit Labour. Not that he needed the list spot, though. He stood again in Tai Tokoro and ousted incumbent Hone Harawera, killing off internet mana in the process. I've got an immense respect for Hone. Um, I think that we're uh, two sides of the same coin. Davis found his stride in opposition, sinking his teeth into the injustice of Kiwi detainees on Christmas Island, where he trekked through the bush and talked to prisoners. Bro, tell the guys to stop pointing. I stop pointing. Even heckling then Prime Minister John Key about it. You've been, Prime Minister, you've been gutless, you need to help the 501s. That was just all part of trying to um, raise awareness of the, of the issue. And I think it worked. He exposed fight clubs at the privately run Mount Eden prison. The Minister needs to go because he's responsible for this mess. His own responsibilities, though, took priority in 2017 when he was made Deputy Labour leader. And I turned it down, I said, there's more talented people than me, they should um, really have the opportunity. But they said, like, you know, we, you know, we, we need the Labour Party to, to look different. And I said, OK, I get it. And um, so I took on the role. And took ministerial roles that year when Jacinda Ardern became Prime Minister. She, I think, is the most courageous, strong leader I've come across in anything I've done, be it education, be it, be it politics. Despite being deputy leader, he was never deputy prime minister. I'd have been hopeless, to be perfectly frank. You know, I just, I, I just didn't want it. Eh? His portfolios of corrections, children, and Maori crown relations weren't easy, and he faced fire from all sides, even real ones at Waikiria Prison. But it was prison population reduction targets that plagued him. It was twisted by the opposition then that we're just letting criminals out. No, that's not the case. His legacy. He's most proud of what he's achieved with Māori Crown relations. A lack of litigation against the government because we did stuff to, at the lowest possible level, to resolve issues. And you look at this government now, they've already got Māori lining up to sue them. Passionate about his role until the very end. Lloyd Burr, News Hub. Mm -hmm.